Hey guys, Matt here with Carolina Coops, and today we are in our shop in upstate New York. Behind me is the California Coupe. We've been talking about it for a while. Well, here it is. We finally got the chance to get it in production, and we took the time yesterday to assemble all the walls, and then come up front here into the shipping area and assemble the final product. So what I want to do in this video is take advantage of having a finished California Coupe, and my goal is just to go over every single detail about it, hopefully answer all the questions that are out there that we've gotten already, and answer any questions that we haven't gotten yet. So to start off with, um, notice the pink hue on all the lumber. This is the Douglas fir. It's the same exact lumber that we use on all our coupes. It doesn't matter if it's California, the American, custom, whatever. So it's very, very important to keep that in mind because this is the same quality material. And obviously the whole goal is that we're trying to make this coupe as affordable as possible. So that's why I'm trying to emphasize so you can see the value in it. So all Douglas fir pine, I'm sorry, Douglas fir and pocket screwed and glued. And the other thing that's the same as all the other coupes is the half inch hardware cloth, the black PVC coated, the metal roofing um, comes standard with the Galvalume roofing. Um, comes with one egg hutch and when I say one egg hutch doesn't mean it's just one nest box this one is uh, what we call a double gang and the reason why it's only a double gang is the hen house is actually three foot deep instead of four foot deep so we brought this down and that made it so that we had to bring the hen uh, sorry the egg hutch smaller and there's only one divider so we'll get a close-up look of that here in a little bit um, so one egg hutch you can add a double and you can also put it on whatever side you want the other thing, very similar to the American, is we have all these windows. Um, same thing, we have a peg. I know there's mixed feelings out there about this. Um, I'm trying to make it as easy as possible, but some people like the chain, some people like the peg idea. Those are oak dowels. We're actually gonna uh, do a test here soon and break them. Some people are like, well, they're gonna snap. I doubt it. But we're gonna actually gonna see how many pounds it takes to break them. So look, to, uh, look forward to that video. But anyways, the idea is just keep it simple but yet effective. Tons of ventilation, very, very important. Doesn't matter what the coupe is, we want as much ventilation as possible. And you can adjust what, how much ventilation you're getting. The other thing is uh, that we made a change, and this also helped bring the price down, is we put the polycarbonate on the outside of the framing. And the biggest reason for that is I thought it looked better what we were doing with the American. It was inside the framing. But as water comes off, and this is right here, we had to drill weep holes so that the water didn't get trapped and it came out. I think it still looks good. Hopefully you guys agree. And again, it saved us on production, which brings that price down. But you can open and close them. And here's the dowel right here. It's just an oak dowel. We got these pre-drilled holes. So if you want to open up all the way, just put it up there. And the window stays open. And it still acts like an awning for, uh, to prevent sideways rain from getting inside the hen house. The one thing we haven't finalized yet is where to put this little bugger so we don't lose them. Most likely, um, we thought about this after we put the polycarbonate on, and we'll probably take the polycarbonate off this, and we're just going to drill a little hole there so you can hide it right there. So it's right there when you don't need it. But anyways, if you got any thoughts on that, please let me know. So <clears throat> those are the windows backed up with a half inch hardware cloth. Very, very important so that, you know, your nighttime predators, your girls are sleeping inside the hen house. This is very important. You have half-inch hardware cloth there. Gate latch, zinc T-hinges, all the same hardware in all our coops. Another thing that I wanted to point out, again, is bring costs down, is we don't have that overhang. I just really wanted, I didn't want to add another piece of metal if we didn't have to. I think it looks really good. Uh, it is the same siding on the inside. And the other thing that we eliminated were the screen doors. It just didn't look good. If you looked at a video we did a while ago with the first prototype of the Cali Coupe, it, it just didn't look good. Um, but you still have tons of ventilation um, with all your windows. While we're back here, uh, let's take a look at some measurements. So again, this is four foot wide. It's going to be exactly 48 inches. And the overall length of the coupe is nine foot. And the other thing I want to point out is normally our wall sections are built in six foot sections and that's so it fits on a pallet so it can ship anywhere around the world. These are three foot sections. 
So right now we have three sections, so this gives us a total length of nine foot. So that is what's going to come standard. And of course, from there you can add three foot at a time, which works out perfectly because each roofing panel is three foot wide. And the other thing we're trying to do, again, to get that price down, is have this fit on a three foot wide pallet instead of a four foot wide. So that's the other big thing there. Um, the roofing, here's a good example. This is all one and a half inch framing, but it's notched. So just like all our other coupes, so that's a great detail. Makes it nice and strong, but more importantly, when you're going to put these coupes together, you don't have to be a roofer. It's extremely easy to assemble our coupes because when it comes to the roofing, everything has an index point. You don't have to break out a tape measure at that point to put your roof together. Um, the other measurement I wanted to get is our height. A lot of times people ask that. So from the ground going up, we are to the peak of the ridge cap is 86 inches. So that's seven foot two. Uh, the American, for example, at six foot wide, that's uh, what's that, seven and a half foot. So we're a little bit shorter, which makes sense because we don't have nearly as long of a rise on our roofing system there. Um, but the other big important thing is the size of the hen house. And from the floor of the hen house to the peak, we have, uh, I'll take my word for it, uh, 58 inches. So almost five foot, okay? Now, here's what's very important. Um, and this is true with all our coops. Again, it's all about size, having the right size hen house. And the reason is when you have a very small hen house, you have very little room for error. When you have a very large hen house, you have room for error. And what I mean by that is, let's say this is sitting out in the open sun and heat is what will stress and kill your chickens. So many people are very concerned about the cold. Chickens do well in cold temperatures. The wind chill, yes, close those windows, block that wind chill. But when it comes to the heat, you gotta make sure this hen house can breathe. So with all this room for that air to come in and also the ridge cap is open, it can exhaust out through the ridge cap, it's not gonna continue to heat up. So you have a lot of room for air. So when people are talking about, you know, what size hen house should I have? What you really need to ask yourself is, how many cubic feet do I have to square foot of ventilation? And that, those are some numbers we should calculate, but those are, that, those are the important numbers. The other thing to keep in mind is, Chickens do two things in here. They sleep on the roost bars, which is right here. It comes with one roost bar. It's four foot long. So I'm gonna recommend four standard hens. You could cheat industry standards, eight inches. So do the math real quick. 48 inches divided by eight. I don't ever believe in maxing out a hen house, um, but that'll give you an idea. And of course, if you have bantams, you can cut that number in half. Oh, speaking of roost bar, the other nice thing is we got our own CNC machine. Um, well, they were here. We've been cutting hundreds and hundreds of these sockets. So we're back to where you can pop your roost bar out if you need to clean it for your neat freaks. And then um, it sits right down in this high density polyethylene uh, socket that holds your roost bar. And speaking of high density polyethylene, that does come as an option. If you want to add that to your deep litter system down here, you can add the high density. You don't need it, save the money, but I do recommend doing something to protect the wood. So you either can oil it, um, a food safe oil, just think of it like a salad bowl, a wooden salad bowl, that's all you're doing. A food safe oil, like a mineral oil, vegetable oil, all you're making sure is that moisture cannot penetrate into the wood. So what the oil does is it'll penetrate into the wood, leaving no room left for the water. Um, and speaking of the deep litter system, if you've never heard of that before, for whatever reason, we got them in all our other videos, one of them, probably the best parts of all our chicken coops is we incorporate the deep litter system. And what that means is, you're basically composting in the floor of your hen house and you can go depending on how many chickens you have in there um, a year two years three years without having to clean it because you're just going to let it compost we are huge fans of the industrial hemp um, you start with three four inches at the bottom and then add to that as you start to smell that nitrogen you add the carbon and let the microbes do their work and you'll be in good shape but when it comes time to clean open up these doors doesn't get any better than this this is again true for all our coops now with the California coupe, drop this deep litter door down, bring your wheelbarrow up, pulling sweeping motion, it just does not get any easier than that. Um, I don't know if you got a shot of the other side of the egg hutch. I did, it looks great in there. Yeah.
three quarter ply, put your nesting material in there, not pine shavings, not industrial hemp. I know you can get away with that, but I like nesting material. That way it makes less of a mess. So let's close this up. Not that thing, but I um, just out of curiosity and I had old coconut hair baskets and I put those in our egg hutch at home and I have not yet had a frozen egg. I didn't know that. And they actually sell coconut, was coconut hair? Mm -hmm. um, mats that we have actually, I've seen customers use that and put them down inside their nest box. So that's, that's good to know, frozen eggs do suck. Uh, that is a real issue. Oh, here's the other thing I wanna point out. And we're gonna incorporate this very soon. Um, now that this is finally done and it's in production, we're gonna go back to the American, take what we've learned from the American, we incorporate it into this and we're gonna put it back into the American, the new improved upgrades. One of the things that I never liked about the American is when you close these doors, um, we were trying to keep it so that there were no drafts and keep the tolerances very tight, but this is organic material. Wood's gonna expand and contract, and, and as a woodworker, or anytime you're building, you always have to take that into account. So what we did in this case to make it better, is we took advantage of having a CNC machine, and we are now cutting everything out so we have this lip, if you will. It seems a little overkill, but if you were to look inside this hen house, and we'll get some pictures of it later, the entire inside has all the um, 3 8 siding, but what's nice is by leaving it proud or leaving that lip there all the way around, even on the deep litter door here. Um, I mean, listen to this sound. Oh, here, let me open this up. We've closed off all those gaps, and it just works out perfectly uh, to be able to close that. And of course, these barrel bolts on the inside, and then do the same thing with the hen house doors. Just close that off. It slows down any draft that's going through there. So that's another huge improvement I'm very, very proud of. And because we were already cutting it on the CNC machine, it really didn't add any labor costs. So again, we're very, very proud of that, getting the um, improvements into the coop and keeping the price down. Want to point out everything on the bottom, this is all pressure treated lumber, very, very important because that's where your ground contact is going to be and that's where you're going to have constant uh, moisture and we don't want to rot the wood down there, so that's all pressure treated lumber. Again, looking at this side over here, we got another window. Um, there is a peg somewhere, I think it's in the egg hutch. All the windows, you put the peg in there, you can leave them open. And then you got this opening here. When you go to assemble your coop, you can pick which side you want the egg hutch on, or again, you can order two egg hutches. You don't need it, but I know a lot of people, a lot of our customers buy two egg hutches for these smaller coops just so it's symmetrical. Drives people nuts seeing something lopsided, if you will. Oh, you know, and something I haven't mentioned yet. Um, why do we call it the California Coop? Here's another reason why I'm very proud of what we've done. One of the things I've learned about business is listen to what your customers say. And out in California especially, we had a lot of customers or have a lot of customers that, you know, they could, they, they love the bigger coops, but they just did not have the room for it. And when I went out to visit into California doing coop installs or doing um, site surveys, they weren't kidding. You guys out in California, especially Southern California, you don't have a lot of room. So what I wanted to do is try to maximize having the perfect chicken coop for this footprint size. So even though, yes, I'm trying to get the price down, make the chicken coop as affordable as possible, the number one concept about the California coop was, so it fits, especially everyone out in California. So that's the reason why we call it the Cali coop or California coop. And um, already people have really liked that idea that they can now have the quality of a, a coop coming from Carolina Coops that fits their area. Uh, another thing I want to point out about the California Coop is the run door. It's coming standard on the side. And the reason why I say standard is because anytime it's the same thing over and over, it helps us get the price down. We talked about putting the run door on the end of the run. But going back to that California concept, not having a lot of room, I've seen a lot of people have to take this chicken coop, tuck it up against a brick wall, a brick fence, and they really have very little room here. So we figured it just makes the most sense to have everything uh, that's functional on just two walls. You got your run door here, you got the egg hutch there, and then the hen house on the back side. And then hopefully you have enough room on the back side over on the other side of the wall to be able to open up your uh, window for ventilation. But that was one of the reasons why we chose to go ahead and make it so that the run door is on the side. 
Now, with that said, this opening, that opening, and the and same thing on the opposite side, um, you can put your run door anywhere you want in those four openings. And I always recommend when you're assembling your run door, you don't have to hinge it on the side, but we like to do that. We always like to have the run door swing back into the coop. And the biggest reason is so you have something hooked to. So when you want to let your girls out, all you're going to do is just simply hook to the screen. Chickens can come and go as they please. Another thing that's exactly the same, um, we got the lockout cable for the gate latch here. All the same thing as all the other coops. And then when you come in here, what I wanted to show is we actually, when we put screen on coops, we take advantage of all our pneumatic tools. Well, we did it here. We actually took the time to assemble it just like a customer would. And it actually went a lot better than I thought it would. We have all these furring strips that you nail the screen on. It gives it a nice finished look. And one of the things we did is our shipping and receiving guy, he's got to be, I don't know, 240 pounds. We tested how strong this is, and our foreman was actually able to pick him up with a test piece with the screen nailed into it with a furring strip. So we definitely are going to have to get a video of that. Uh, I just, I was blown away it was that strong. But the reason why we have the furring strips is not everyone has a lot of pneumatic tools. If you have them and you want to use it to put on the screen, by all means, go ahead and do that. But if you don't, if you have a hammer, perfect. Um, go ahead and nail in all these hot dip galvanized nails, put it on all your furring strips. And then I guess while we're in here, it's the same uh, ramp for the chickens to go in and out. And here's the other window um, to open and close to give you, again, tons of ventilation. You can never have enough ventilation for inside your hen house. And we actually have holes on each side. One pet is more than enough to hold the window open. Maybe we just did that to give them an option on which side they wanted to put it on. Polycarbonate, uh, 400 times stronger than glass. Same stuff we use on all the coops. It's a great looking coop. It's a great size for people with smaller yards. Yeah, again, guys, that's the idea behind this. Um, it drives me nuts when I go into some of these brick and mortar stores um, and they're selling these cheap Chinese coops. They're garbage. They're absolutely garbage. They're not going to last you a year. And they're not really cheap anymore. Oh, now that, that is a very good point um, that, you know, their prices have gone up, which makes this hopefully make this that much more, um, you see the value in it, have the best coop because those cheap coops out there, they're not cheap coops. There's one thing I've learned doing this for, gosh, we're going over 10 years now. There really is no such thing as a cheap chicken coop. It just doesn't exist. But we've taken everything we've learned over the years and we keep being innovative, keep getting smarter, listen to our customers, and coming up with this product right here, which I'm extremely proud of. And I hope you guys feel the same way. If you have any questions, comments, please leave them down below. We love hearing everything you guys have to say. And, of course, you can always check us out at our website at carolinacoops.com, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, all those great social medias. We'll bring the links up right now maybe. But, of course, give us a call, 919-794-3989. If you have any questions, give us a call. We'd love to sell you one of these coops. Thanks for watching.